Well, good afternoon. <laughs> I'm delighted to be uh, here on the program for the first time, although I do have to confess that I'm under just a little bit of stress uh, this afternoon. First, it is intimidating partnering with minds like Randy's and Raghu's and also following in the footsteps of the learned uh, men and women who have served on this panel in the past. It's a terrific opportunity and I'm very glad to be here. But I'm also under stress because I have a high school senior at home. I probably could stop there, but uh, he is coming right down to the wire in his college application process. And among the schools that he is considering, and I'm quite happy about this, is the University of Chicago. Now, any of you who have either attended Chicago or have children uh, there or considering it know that Chicago prides itself on having the uncommon application, where your choices of essay questions this year include, tell us about the relationship between you and your arch nemesis, Where's Waldo, really? <laughs> or this one, which I thought was kind of cute. Heisenberg claims that you cannot know both the position and momentum of an electron with total certainty. Choose two other concepts that cannot be known simultaneously and discuss the implications. <laughs> now, uh, I, I did offer to my son that the position and momentum of his college applications were two very unknown quantities. <laughs> uh, but he has not yet seen fit to write on that uh, particular topic. I'm also under stress because after having returned to the private sector from the official sector just five months ago, I've uh, discovered that my new colleagues at Northern Trust are really quite angry with me, blaming me for all of the regulations with which they now have to comply, including the stress test, which is beginning uh, in earnest uh, this month, as well as anger at the low for long policy, which has not been the friend of bank uh, earnings. Uh, I told our chairman, though, that in that regard he would have to stand in line, that my mother actually is very upset at the low for long policy, having recently rolled a certificate of deposit over at 50 basis points and calling me afterwards to uh, mention to Chairman Bernanke that he needs to do something about this and fast. <laughs> so relative to those other areas of stress, I'm hopeful that the challenge of delivering intelligent remarks today will be mild uh, by comparison. I wanted to amplify on a few of the themes that Randy mentioned and hopefully set the table for Raghu's remarks which will follow. First, among the things that is limiting the American economic expansion is that household balance sheet repair in the United States is very much a work in progress. We should be thankful for three years of uninterrupted growth, but it has been modest, and perhaps it's the best that we can hope for. Households took the hit of both an equity correction and a housing correction, and while we've regained a good fraction of the money lost in the equity markets, we've only recently begun regaining some of the $7 trillion of home equity that was destroyed in the housing market corrections. At the peak or depth, if you want to look at it that way, housing for many households had been the leading source of retirement saving, of college saving, of saving for automobiles, of saving for other homes, and with that removed, the ability to leverage uh, is very much reduced. And so we're engaged in a delevering process that many would suspect still has some way to travel. In addition, we have the community of families who have suffered through a job interruption, either being unemployed or underemployed, returning to school in some cases, uh, but that has certainly created a chink in their lifetime income stream that will have to be made up for. Even prior to the financial crisis, a substantial fraction of U.S. households had only very modest savings. This is partly of their own doing in our consumption culture, but also partly the doing of their agents who manage the many pension funds across the United States who right now are somewhat underfunded. Here in the state of Illinois, we are number one. <laughs> A designation that we're not entirely proud of. 
As a result of all of this, though, there is a vast tract of Americans who are financially unprepared for a retirement that is fast approaching. The saving that they'll have to do and undertake in the years ahead may place important limits on the pace of consumption and therefore economic growth. Secondly, I'd like to talk a little bit about the most significant uh, consumption item for most Americans, which is uh, housing. And as Randy mentioned, the signs there on both housing starts and sales have gotten somewhat more encouraging. My oldest is 23, and while she normally doesn't pay much attention at all to the economic news, she has seemingly been following the housing market quite closely. She came to Karen and I uh, over Thanksgiving with uh, a proposal, suggesting that the correction in house prices had reached a point where we might want to increase our allocation to this particular sector. <laughs> now, uh, we're certainly not unprepared for entreaties like this, I should mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that my wife is also an economics degree holder from the University of Chicago, which qualifies us, I think, as the ultimate fun couple. Interestingly, the dormitory where we met was on the very site of the new Booth School of Business. So for those of you who are recent graduates or who visit that building, if the walls could only talk. Uh, <laughs> in any event, my daughter's uh, pitch was that we should go a little longer real estate and perhaps grab one of the many available condominia along Chicago's lakeshore, and while we could use it on the weekends, we shouldn't worry about a caretaker because she'd be happy to fill that role uh, quite uh, gladly. In any event, we were uh, so far unmoved thinking about it, but I worry a little bit that absent uh, families that can afford to go long real estate as, as we might consider, we may see our housing recovery somewhat limited for several factors. First, uh, analysis of the sector often focuses on the family formation that has occurred since the crisis began. Unfortunately, many of those family formations, uh, a translation of which are young people who have graduated and don't want to live at home, so this doesn't mean married couples or couples with children, many of that cohort are experiencing unemployment rates that are much higher than they're used to, and in addition have graduated with levels of student debt that are much higher than previous classes have. As a result, they are not candidates uh, or as good a candidate for mortgage lending as they used to be, especially in an environment where mortgage lending standards, amongst all lending standards, remain the only ones which are still very, very tight. There is a significant community of prospective homeowners that could get a mortgage in 2006 that cannot today. And lenders are still very cautious, not just because of the outlook for housing itself, but there are a host of policy issues that are still in front of them that are clearly constraining their activities, including the prospective actions of the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau in defining underwriting standards and fostering secondary market activity, as well as the mere futures of, of GSEs like Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, and the FHA, which had really taken over the role of the nation's subprime lender after private institutions vacated it. We have a rotation back towards renting, which might not be a bad thing. The home ownership rate has gone uh, from 69 to about 65% today, but the carryover spending that occurs when you have renters is much lower than it is when we have homeowners. So while the US housing recovery is quite promising, it may be limited by regulatory uncertainty faced by mortgage lenders, and more broadly, America is long overdue a healthy conversation about the scope of housing policy. Economic policy more generally in the United States has been very helpful, and I wonder how we would have fared over the last three years without uh, the stimulus that we've received. But it appears that both fiscal and monetary policy in the United States are reaching their limits. Uh, we've mentioned the fiscal cliff, and I'm sure this will come up in the Q&A, but it is unlikely that the resolution to the cliff will result in more economic stimulus here in the United States. I would also note for those who are worried about the cliff having a seismic effect on January the 1st, the threat of the cliff has clearly been with those making investment decisions for a number of months as capital spending and investment in human capital has likely been impaired 
by the uncertainty over what tax rates are going to be into the new year. We have the good fortune of having a banking sector that, if anything, is overcapitalized with too much liquidity. But as Randy mentioned, loan demand is modest. And clarity over capital standards is still something uh, that our regulators are, are grappling with. The Federal Reserve is in its third round of quantitative easing. There is a lot more discussion about whether the risks of pushing further are worth what seem to be diminishing returns. And as Randy mentioned, the art of communication in steering long-term rates lower is taking on new and higher art forms as the Federal Reserve considers phrasing its decisions in terms that relate outcomes to macro variables. In general, central banks around the world are nearing or perhaps past limits of what they can do to stimulate economic activity, and many are also engaged in very important philosophical discussions as to exactly what the nature of central banking ought to be. A key risk to the outlook remains Europe. Uh, if you want to look at it on the bright side, those of you who are frustrated and disappointed with the American legislative process will probably feel comforted watching the news from European capitals, uh, where as they drift back into recession, uh, the rancor only seems to rise. There are troubled or nationalized banks in almost every European country at the moment. Uh, the willingness to be transparent about the financial sector in Europe is a real uh, limitation to uh, therapy. Austerity is being stressed over growth, which may be appropriate in some cases, but not appropriate in others. Demographics, very much more challenging in much of Europe and in China, in fact, than they are here in the United States. So the imbalance that places stress on, stress on public programs and pensions is, if anything, more acute in those countries. There are competitiveness issues across uh, Europe. The article in The Economist on France uh, recently is one that I would recommend to all of you, not normally captured as part of the uh, conversation about the ills of Europe. France, nonetheless, may have some similarities to its peripheral brethren in seeking to become uh, relevant competitively. Politics, uh, unfortunately, has made for very temporary fixes. It always seems like there's a regional or a national election just over the horizon that prevents uh, reasoned uh, discussion. I would observe that the most recent accord uh, surrounding Greece uses a level of financial sleight of hand that is reminiscent of the accounting practices that got Greece into this mess in the first place. And for those of you, by the way, who have read uh, Michael Lewis's book, Boomerang, which has a chapter on Greece, uh, that chapter, ironically, is entitled, And They Invented Math? As opposed to the United States, Europe has contractionary credit conditions, contractionary fiscal policy, and a central bank that is very limited in its powers to stimulate growth. If Europe is unable to reverse its outcome, or in the worst case, if it deepens, this will certainly limit global economic performance and presents tail risks that could result in financial contagions and outcomes that are much worse. To borrow a bit from Winston Churchill, I suppose the worst outcome from Europe would be staying together, except for the case where it comes apart. There are massive incentives for northern countries to preserve the Union, given the expansion of their exports that they have enjoyed since currency parity came into place. In addition, I don't know whether there is an orderly exit scenario for Greece, given the unknowns of financial linkages between that country, its banks, and others. And further, should Greece exit, I can imagine that many would have questions about similar fiscal models like the one in Spain, and how do you begin to put a wall around a new Europe? Finally, a few reflections on China, which I thought Randy covered very well. Uh, it is uh, hard to feel sorry for a country that is still growing at 7.5%, nonetheless coming down from 11. Uh, that does seem to be a challenge for them. This has global ramifications. Very quietly, U.S. exports to China have grown to about 7% of our total uh, shipments, and so we are at risk as China uh, decelerates somewhat. And the recent leadership transition seemed to highlight many of the economic challenges that China faces as it continues its march uh, to becoming a mature and more Western uh, system. What should the pace of reform be in China in order to press ahead with market reforms and preserve the cultural stability that is so important to the Central Party? What should the role of markets be and in international participation in those markets? 
how would one deal with levels of inequality that came to light uh, during the course of the campaign, uh, ones which were exacerbated by reports of payments made to government officials. In an environment where consumers in Europe and the United States may be constrained, many eyes are turning to the growing Chinese middle class for sustenance. But China is not ready to become a consumer of last resort for the world's economies, given cultural factors that include the absence of a safety net and filial, filial obligation to care for elderly parents that has led to very high rates of saving. And while it's a goal to develop a consumer culture, the institutions and sensibilities that would support that are still uh, being built. So those are my thoughts. Uh, looking forward to Raghu's uh, comments, and I'll uh, look forward to your questions.